You know, what I like to do is, as I finish different areas of the home, the exterior, the attic space, the second floor, etc., I like to try to recap uh, with my client of what I'm finding and explain different deficiencies or possible deficiencies of the structure. Got it. Okay, so as we scroll through all the different sections, we see more pictures. You take pictures of anything that's wrong or anything. I'm Caroline Gao in the Baird & Warner Glenbrook office. So you've negotiated a great deal after visiting lots of homes and you've had your, in -home, your home inspection. Now what? So you receive this report that's 125 pages and you freak out. No worries. So I've invited George Norberg of Detail Home Inspections back to the show, home inspection back to the show today. Um, we interviewed George at one of his inspections back in the spring, which was very educational, following him around on the roof, through the electric panel, and seeing what is involved with an actual inspection. So now I'd like to actually walk step by step through the home inspection report so that you understand what kind of things are important, what kind of things are maintenance, and how we proceed for the next steps. So George, thanks so much for coming in today. I really appreciate your help. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to walk through a report. Absolutely. Okay, so buyers, um, they've gone through the inspection and when they're, they're usually present, so we follow you around, we ask questions. Um, so then after the inspection, within the usually that same night or the next morning, the buyer is given a PDF um, with pictures of your report, correct? Correct. All right. So here we go, we're using um, my house from uh, several years ago, so that um, the first the first section of the report is about, this is 14 pages, and it's just photos you take outside, inside. Correct, at the beginning of the report are a series of courtesy photos, so you can get a feel for the home. Uh, when we're doing an inspection, there's a lot of things going through the buyer's uh, mind, and it's nice to have general photos to refer back to uh, for furniture layout, for just, gee, what does my living room look like? Got it, okay, so this takes us to the table of contents. So table of contents just kind of shows you where in the report you're gonna find all the different sections. Correct, I have a table of contents for every property I inspect, whether it's residential, commercial, to a small condo, to a McMansion as they're called, and I try to lay that out so it's easier to identify possible uh, issues for the potential buyer. Got it. All right, so let's look at an example. Um, each section has a description, so the first one we come to would be roofing, chimneys, roof structure, and attic. So what are all of these descriptions you have here? Well, in each section on the table of contents, I break apart the report to identify different uh, specific items that are important to the potential buyer. Uh, roofing is typically a very big concern because it's a big ticket item if there are uh, deficiencies involved. So I've created a template slash uh, process to identify the particular components of a home, whether it be a roof, whether it be a chimney, uh, electrical panel, etc. so it's easy for a potential buyer to follow. Got it, okay, so then each section, so we have roof, and then you put, what's this picture here? Well, the particular picture of that is a, a flashing, and apparently the fastener slash nail has pulled away, and um, I like to notify that stuff because we're in a geographic climate here, that potential snow and ice could back, back up underneath the flashing and possibly cause water intrusion. Got it, and I see you've got an arrow, so that's pointing to the picture um, of, of the deficiency. Okay, and here we have a chimney, so then you've got an arrow pointing to a crack. Correct, um, I always like to identify uh, the con conditions of the chimney, and uh, whether it's been repaired or an active crack. Again, we're in freeze-thaw uh, climate. Uh, snow ice gets in there, it, it makes the crack open up and you can possibly get water intrusion. Okay, so then I see throughout here you've got pictures of as we follow you around the house and then you're just highlighting things that you see. Then we get to the next section, it's the same formula that we saw on the roof. 
And you're giving as much detail description as you can. Correct. I've created this template as I try to be user friendly and what I would be looking for as a potential buyer and in the best interest of the buyer so they know what they're purchasing. All right, so here we come to our first red lettering. What does the red lettering indicate here on the report? Well, sometimes the different fonts or different colors indicate uh, possible uh, deficiencies and the computer program sometimes picks that up or sometimes I specifically tell it. But in this case here, the patio uh, happens to be higher than the foundation. Excuse me. And when that happens, snow, ice, water has the potential of backing into the mortar joints going over the sill plate and causing water intrusion into the basement. Oh, that's not good. Okay. So then we keep going. I see you're highlighting certain things. So you do outside and inside. Correct. Okay. So drywall at the access to the attic. Correct. What I'm trying to point out there is that's a pull down stairs with uh, typical plywood uh, covering and it's good common practice in the industry to have a drywall whether it be at the, the pull down or above the attic access and with the drywall it has a fire rating and it's good practice to seal off um, the living space to the attic because if a fire were to occur you don't want it to get into the attic space right okay um, now are you quoting code as we go through these no um, I have a, a background in building codes. However, when we do an inspection, it's not a code inspection. I don't know when that home was built and what the code was applied at that building time. However, it does help me identify deficiencies as a home inspector. Got it, okay. And then what kind of things do you point out as, that might just be maintenance and a heads up to the potential home, home buyer versus something that is a deficiency currently? A maintenance item could be a window not operating, a window handle uh, missing, screens missing. Um, what other could be a maintenance thing? A uh, tear in carpet, uh, settlement cracks in drywall, those type of items that come to my mind. Okay, so here I'm here, I, I'm at a electrical area where it says receptacle needs to cover a licensed electrician to repair. So can you tell us more about that? Yes, anytime you have exposed wiring, whether it be at a receptacle, at a switch, at an electrical panel, etc., you would want to, yeah. at a minimum, get a cover plate on there and make it safe for the occupants. Okay, and um, so one thing I wanted to ask you about, like with the ages of furnace, hot water heater, I know that you go through and you actually look up the serial number and you can tell an age of an appliance. Yes, a particular appliance, one would be an air conditioner, a furnace, um, a water heater. I like to identify for my potential buyer the uh, particular ages so they know um, into the future they may or may not need to be replacing it. And I use that uh, to look it up on the internet with a serial number typically. Okay, I was looking for um, 3.24. Okay, so this, um, ask the seller what the power is for. Sometimes there are different uh, components of the home that I'm unable to identify. And in this case, what I was identifying, it was extension cord wiring. I don't recall off the top of my brain, but it might have went through the wall, maybe feeding up into an attic space or a different area. And anytime you see extension cord wiring, you need to at least identify it so we can find out what the purpose is. Right, so sometimes we'll see on a home inspection that it's not necessarily something that's wrong, but it's maybe something you want to ask the homeowner about because they've lived there for 10 years, they know more about it, and it's just an inquiry. Correct, or what I would call an inquiry slash maintenance item just to get clarification so the potential buyer has an answer. Mm -hmm. And then as we go through too and they ask questions, do you kind of tell them, okay, well this needs, um, this is fine for now, but maybe in five years you would want to do some maintenance? Yeah, what I like to do is as I finish different areas of the home, the exterior, the attic space, the second floor, etc., I like to try to recap uh, with my client of what I'm finding 
and explain different deficiencies or possible deficiencies of the structure. Got it. Okay, so as we scroll through all the different sections, we see more pictures. You take pictures of anything that's wrong or anything that you have questions about. And again, it's just um, it's a document that people can refer back to. They, uh, the buyer pays for the report, the buyer owns the report. So the buyer has to give permission to share the report, whether it's to the attorney, to the agent, Correct. to the homeowner. Yes. Right. So that's why we're using my report today, so that uh, George doesn't get in trouble for sharing. Uh, well, just you don't want the, the report to get in someone else's hands that's not authorized to, to view it. And um, they pay for it, so it's, it's their choice who they share that with. Got it. So now I'm scrolling through looking for the summary. Can you talk about why there are duplicates when you've got pictures in the early part of the report and then you scroll down to the um, summary and it looks like there's duplicates? Why is that? Well, in the beginning, it's detailed uh, areas of the home, rooms, etc. And I have I created a summary of each trade: general summary, electrical, plumbing, heating, and a maintenance summary. Sometimes things are moving quite rapidly with the transaction, and people want to get to the to the crux of the matter: what's really wrong with the home. So I try to create the summary of I would say items that are important to negotiate or maintenance issues so everybody's informed and um, sometimes the reports can be long however I'm trying to be very detailed so the potential buyer knows what they're buying. Got it and then whose responsibility is it to talk to the um, potential seller about any issues that you find? You? The agent? I, the I'm not aware of any uh, items that I have to talk to the, um, the seller about I've been involved with uh, inspections where there's life safety issues and I try, if the listing agent's there, I try to explain to he or she to, to pass on my message. But there are occasions where there are life safety issues that you do want to convey your concern as a uh, inspector to the, uh, the seller so they know to get it corrected. Okay, so that's, um, that's if there's an emergency, but other than that, you aren't talking directly to the homeowner. Typically, no, I do not communicate with the homeowner. Have I? Yes. Um, something that comes to my mind uh, would be a life safety issue, uh, a bad flu on a, a furnace. I've had that happen before, where the flue pipe is uh, dispersing carbon monoxide in the crawl space or in an attic. So um, I try to convey that so they can get it corrected. Okay, so then what's your counsel after you give the, the buyer the report? What, how do you leave it with them? After I transmit the report via email, I like to do a, a follow-up phone call slash text message with my client to make sure there's no outstanding questions or clarification they need so they know what to potentially buy. Excellent. So typically what we do is I get permission from my client and your client who's the buyer and we forward the report to the attorney in Illinois, as you know. Everybody is responsible for having a real estate attorney working for their um, interests. And then uh, between the agent and the attorney, we um, come up with next steps. Sometimes it's asking for a credit for those issues. Sometimes it's asking the homeowner to repair something. Other times it's like, you know, looking at, did you get a good deal on the contract and are you prepared to proceed and not ask for anything? So um, it kind of depends. It goes line by line and um, we can help the buyer with that process. Okay. So anything else you wanted to add, George? I just uh, like to provide uh, the best uh, possible report for my clients and uh, be at a non-biased opinion so the potential buyer knows what they're purchasing. Awesome. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for your time. These are the kinds of invaluable insights I share with my clients when they choose to work with me. Hire me today.